military experts are already calling the battle for the village of Robotino the second Bakhmut for the armed forces of Ukraine. In the battle for Bakhmut, the armed forces of Ukraine lost its most combat-ready units, while in the battle for the village of Robotino, the Ukrainian army lost practically all its combat-ready reserves. At the same time, the armed forces of Ukraine still could not fully capture this village. War correspondents report that the village of Robotino has been wiped off the face of the earth due to fierce fighting. There is not a single surviving building left. At the moment, the armed forces of Ukraine are located in the north of the territory of this village and Russian troops are occupying positions in the south. The center of Robotino remains in the so-called gray zone, which is constantly being shelled by both sides. Today, experts from the Center for Eastern European Studies also confirmed the words of the war correspondents. In their article, military experts from Europe stated that most of the territory of the village of Robotino is in the grey zone. This means that the center of this village is not under the control of the armed forces of Ukraine and Russian troops. At the same time, European experts point out that Russian troops continue to control the highway towards the village of Novopokrovka, which connects numerous settlements, including Robotino with the city of Tokmak. That is why the armed forces of Ukraine are so fiercely trying to capture the village of Robotino in order to gain access to the highway leading toward Tokmak. Meanwhile, Indian military experts, representing the edition Asia Times, say that as a result of the three-month counteroffensive, the armed forces of Ukraine turned out to be completely exhausted. According to them, this autumn and winter, the Ukrainian army will not be able to attack and organize breakthroughs. Indian experts also say that the Ukrainian command was too self-confident and underestimated the capabilities of the Russian army in the Zaporizhia direction. As a result, frontal attacks on Russian positions led to catastrophic losses in the manpower and equipment of the armed forces of Ukraine. Experts from the edition Asia Times are sure that even if the armed forces of Ukraine will be able to capture the village of Robotino, it will not affect the course of the war in any way, and the Russians will continue to hold all lines of defense. Former director of the Earth Institute at Columbia University and well-known public policy analyst Jeffrey Sachs, without hiding his emotions, bluntly stated that Ukraine is falling apart right before our eyes. According to him, the counteroffensive of the armed forces of Ukraine did not give any results. Not even one strategic goal has been achieved. And despite this, the Biden administration is behaving very cynically, trying to show the public that the defeat of Ukraine in this war will not affect Biden's re-election for a second term. NATO is very afraid that the Russian command will take advantage of the fatigue of the armed forces of Ukraine and give the order to the Russian army to launch a counteroffensive along the entire front line. The Western military expects that the Russians will launch a full-scale attack in the fall and winter, which will lead to the complete defeat of the armed forces of Ukraine. NATO understands the inevitability of Kiev's defeat and is trying to save at least something for the West. So, the director of the private office of the NATO Secretary General, Stian Jensen, officially stated that Ukraine will have to give Russia part of its territory in order to preserve its statehood and join NATO. After these words of Stian Jensen, the Kiev authorities became enraged and demanded from the head of the private office of the NATO Secretary General that he watch his mouth and no longer say such things. As a result, Stian Jensen made a public apology and stated that he said all this while being emotional.
My friends, seeing all this circus, it seems to me that after the end of the war, the director of the private office of the NATO Secretary General will again be forced to apologize for the fact that the counteroffensive of the Ukrainian army turned out to be the most expensive NATO's military failure in history.